from dinosaurs and pink grasshoppers to the dead coming back to life. This is Trending Tuesdays. So, while we were researching stories for this edition of Trending Tuesday, we got a very timely suggestion from some of our subscribers. Now, it was a great idea, and we used it for this installment. So, thanks to JP, IG, and CG for making our job a little bit easier. Cheers! So, let's start with the story suggested by our subscribers. In New Mexico, a nine-year-old boy tripped on something while he was running from his brothers during a hike in the desert. Now, seeing Jude Sparks posing in the picture, you might think it's an image of a kid who created the model of a spaceship, or how somehow constructed a weird-looking object just to make a picture to post online. But Mr. Sparks is shown with the very thing that tripped him up. It turned out to be the skull of a stegomastodon, estimated at more than one million years old. And you know what? It was a rare find as well. It's thought to be only the second such complete skull of the creature found in New Mexico. Experts say the stegomastodon is an ancestor to both mastodons and elephants, and would most likely resemble today's pachyderms. Name that critter. Now quick, can you identify this alligator or crocodile by the tail in the picture? Well, what if we told you the tail does not belong to either reptile and is in fact not really a tail at all, even if it does kind of look that way. Now it's really a sea cucumber that was found at the bottom of the Red Sea in Egypt. This species of the worm-like animals can grow to around five feet long and is actually one of the large ones, although they can grow to more than 16 feet long. Did you know that sea cucumbers help to keep the sea clean by feeding on decaying matter or detritus on the seabed? Mountain of God. Now that volcano with the epic name is located in Tanzania, and experts there say it could erupt at any moment. Rising more than 7,600 feet, it's located less than 70 miles from key sites of ancient human history. Now that includes an area containing the footprints of early humans, estimated to be more than three and a half million years old. Now experts worry that a massive eruption could spew superfast lava that could destroy some of the world's most important anthropological sites. Now it is worth noting Noting that when experts say the eruption is imminent, that could mean anywhere from immediately to around a year or even longer. But from the evidence so far gathered, a more pertinent estimate might be sooner rather than later. Long living worms. They are not pretty to look at and growing to nearly eight feet long, a lot of people think they're downright scary. But did you know that a species of giant tube worms is thought to live for as long as 250 years? Researchers studied the creatures that live nearly 11,000 feet deep in the Gulf of Mexico. At that depth, the seafloor has cracks leaking fluids rich in hydrocarbons, which the huge worms use as a food source. Analyzing the animal's rate of growth, experts determined it could live to be around 250 years old and might possibly even reach an age of 300 years old. Now, while that is impressive, that estimate was easily beaten by a humble clam. Known as an ocean quahog, one specimen lived to the ripe old age of 507. Son of Cecil Slyon. Now you probably recall the story of Cecil the Lion being killed by a big game trophy hunter in 2015. The story made international headlines. Now while the famous lion was thought to have had seven offspring overall, there's now one less of that brood. It was recently reported that Cecil's son, named Zander, was also slain by a big game trophy hunter at a national park in Zimbabwe, and at near the very same spot where Cecil himself was killed. Wildlife experts say the six-year-old big cat was being monitored and was positively ID'd by his electronic tag. Authorities stressed that the hunt was legal and that the hunter involved complied with all park regulations regarding the matter. It's been suggested that an exclusion zone be placed about the park, so that could serve to prevent the accidental killing of big cats that wander past its boundaries. What do you think? Macaque monkey business. Now here's a story that's got many people wondering if there isn't a Planet of the Apes thing going on in Florida, even though it really does involve their fellow primates, rhesus macaque monkeys. 
the feral critters have been forming bands in South Florida and their aggressive behavior has been scaring many families as the animals start claiming suburban backyards for themselves. Macaque monkeys are native to Asia and they first arrived in Florida in the 1930s when a park imported them as a tourist attraction. After another six were added, they were moved to an island in the Silver River. But after they swam to shore, they quickly infiltrated nearby forests where they spread into surrounding neighborhoods. There's now more than 250 of the animals estimated to be running and swinging about the Sunshine State. The creatures are known to be highly adaptable and travel in groups or troops, and they can turn aggressive when they feel their turf is being violated. For now, Officials do not have enough data to monitor the monkeys' movements or to curb their aggressive encounters with humans. And those encounters are especially troubling since some rhesus macaque monkeys are known to carry the herpes B virus, which is deadly to humans. Brain Dead Idea now here's what could be taken as a real-life Frankenstein story. A Florida-based company called BioQuark is working on a way to reanimate cadavers using a substance called bioquantines, if I got that right. According to Dr. Sergei Palian, the substance incorporates the biologics of species like frogs to repair cells that are diseased or damaged and return them to a vital state. An associate company called Reanima is already scheduling experimental trials in Latin America on so-called living cadavers. And that's a reference to volunteers, which include patients who suffer from the irreversible loss of brain function or have been determined to be brain dead. And if you're wondering, the treatment is not meant to cause these volunteers to suddenly jump up out of the bed and be completely cured. Doctors think that a combination of the patient's own stem cells and the bioquantines was served to restart the body's ability to pump blood and to breathe without assistance. The project is intended to lay the groundwork for future developments that can enhance the patient's levels of recovery and of consciousness. pink grasshopper. Now here's another one of those images that a lot of people think could be photoshopped. The creature in the picture looks like it might be something one might see after becoming intoxicated. You know, an insect like this could pair up with a pink elephant to produce a powerful hallucination. But this pink grasshopper is the real deal. It's about an inch long and was spotted in the UK. The weird coloration is the result of a rare genetic mutation which causes the insect to produce an excessive amount of a reddish protein. The mutation is called erythrism and it can even occur with eggshells. While the condition results in some amazing visuals, it really is a disadvantage to most of these animals because the bright coloration makes them easily spotted by predators. This is Trending Tuesdays.